Hi everyone, it's Peter here again, the guy who hates tomatoes but loves front-end development. In today's screencast, we'll answer questions from you. Yes, you write nothing about me, nothing about my blog. It's all your question answered in this short video. So thanks everyone for sending the questions through and let's get to the first one from David. David sent me this email just today actually. So I'm replying David instead of replying by email. I'm creating this video for you. So David's email reads as this. I recently completed your scrolling masterclass. Thanks, great material. Thanks, David. While scroll is great for scrolling animation, I'm curious to hear your thoughts and recommendations for creating non-scrolling animations. I'm looking into Greensock, Animate Edge or Edge Animate and others, but having a hard time deciding the best way forward. I like the Edge Animate is a visual solution. I'm more a designer than developer but something like Greensock seems a bit easier to integrate with the rest of my code. Do you recommend a JavaScript solution or are there good pure CSS, CSS solutions? I'm wanting to be able to animate continuously and sometimes on page low as opposed to just animating hover effects. Thanks for any of your thoughts, David. Alrighty, so David, thanks again for sending the question through. This always uh, makes me happy. Do you know that I'm a big lover of scrolling animations? You know, I can't hide this. I'm uh, addicted to scrolling animations. Every time I see a website which animates on scroll, first thing I do, I inspect it and check it out whether it's using screen, uh, scroller, green sock or scroll magic. So yeah, I'm a big fan of both of these plugins. Scroller is useful when you want to animate on page scroll. If you want to animate without scrolling animations, and a purely on a page load, then Greensock's the way to go. I don't think there is a better JavaScript option at the moment. There's also Velocity JS, but I never never played with that. Greensock's got all the plugins and tools to let you create any animation on the web. So I would definitely recommend a Greensock. Give it a go. It can be a little bit overwhelming at the start because you need to understand the syntax and. Uh, once you get your head around the syntax, it's actually quite straightforward. You can start with the simple timeline light, which is uh, which lets you move things around. Then uh, if you want to nest timelines, you would look at the twin max and uh, the more advanced uh, options when it comes to green sock. If you if you want to use both words, both worlds of scrolling animations and non scrolling animations, then look at scroll magic that lets you trigger animations at certain points, it lets you animate on scroll as scroller does, but it also enables you to just trigger animation at some point and then let it play, let the whole timeline play. Okay, so that's the biggest difference between scroller and scroll magic. That scroll magic lets you trigger animations and let the timeline finish, regardless whether the user still keeps scrolling or not. If you use Adobe Edge, you'll find out that you might need to go back to edge if you want to animate at the different times, at different points. If you want to change the timing, you always need to edit it in Adobe Edge and that, that might be a little bit tricky. Sometimes it's easier to play with the source code and uh, just playing with the times of the animations and offsets uh, straight in the code. So that's where Greensock and Scroll Magix gives you that uh, power. Adobe Edge, obviously it's more visual tool. So if you are a designer, you might like just to drag the timeline and sort of animate that way. But you will always have a bigger control uh, when you use something something like scroll or scroll magic. When you are editing the content uh, co code, blah, blah, blah. When you are editing the code itself, instead of relying on a tool like Adobe Edge to spit out the code for you. So Spend some time learning Greensock, spend some time learning scroll magic. It's definitely worth it. I've got a very simple, nice scroll magic demo coming up uh, on my blog. So maybe check that out as well when it comes out. And uh, I'll be deconstructing that in my future blog posts as well. Again, to sum it up, my recommendation is to use Greensock and scroll magic and stay away for, from Adobe Edge just because of the platform spitting out the code for you. I don't really think there is a CSS solution yet, which is scalable and maintainable. Obviously you can create CSS parallax scrolling 
effects but that is not very scalable and doesn't let you create intuitively uh, more complex animations so yeah my recommendation is greensock and scroll magic the next question is from Carl, who left a comment on one of my youtube videos Hi there, love the video. Can you deconstruct these spurtling.com homepage and the titlelab.com, how it works, especially the iPhone section. Okay, so again, thanks Carl for sending it through. Love receiving questions and comments from, from uh, you. So thanks for sending it through and let's get into it. We'll firstly look at the tileapp.com and how it works page. When you scroll down the page, you'll see the iPhone coming up into view and then a content regarding one of these screenshots is scrolling past while the iPhone is locked in. And that's the effect Carl wanted to deconstruct. Okay, so we'll have a look how this was done. I can tell you straight away that it's not using scroll or scroll magic, it's uh, done with a custom code. So if we inspect it, the main things to take a look at is a couple of classes. So you'll see lock scroll, which is important class in this effect and this scroll and on class. Okay, so these classes, the on class is changing based on how far you scroll down the page. So on moves to the feature two, feature three, and the last feature as well. And also the lock scroll is there while the iPhone is locked into the view. Okay, so before it's removed from the features and it's there while we're scrolling past these three sections and then it's removed again. Okay, so these combinations of these classes is what creates this effect. So when we look at the JavaScript, which is rendering this effect, you'll see a couple of functions happening on scroll. The most important is when we adding and removing class on and also when we adding the lock scroll class and then removing it. Okay, so as I said, it's a custom code, so you will need to understand jQuery to read this, but in a sim simple terms, it looks at the data offset Y, which is the HTML5 data attribute 400. So essentially it looks at the top of this first element and when it's 400 pixels from the top of the viewport, it gives it class on. So that's where these class ons happening. Otherwise it's removing it. And then there is another if statement checking for the touch devices. And then we adding the class lock scroll when the position is bigger or higher than the features offset top. And then we're removing when it's less than that okay so as i said it is a little bit more custom code so yeah you need to understand jquery to be able to write something like this but essentially in a simple terms it looks at the 400 pixel top offset gives it a class on and then in the css there is a class which defines the position which changes the position of the image from position fixed So this is the area where it's get uh, fixed. So you've got a features dot lock scroll, IMG fixed, this position fixed. So if we would remove this lock scroll, you'll see that that image is not fixed anymore and would just float with the rest of the page. Okay, so because I scroll down and everything here is happening on scroll, it triggered the featured the features to have the class scroll again but yeah, in a simple term that's what's happening okay so hopefully that answers your question Carl and now let's have a look at the sproutling.com where is a similar effect when you scroll down the page some of these background images get fixed at some point and being sort of scrolled past the content for each of the sections, but the background image stays fixed. 
So if we inspect it, you'll see that each of these sections, oops, each of these sections have a background image which are the same size. So this is image, background image from one of the sections, this is from the another, and they are being position fixed in the CSS. So fixed background class on these three sections makes it background attachment fixed and said important on it as well. So that's what creates that effect of images overlapping each other, but text scrolling down, oh sorry, up next to it. Okay, similar effect is down later on. I've got this uh, thing on, that's why it sort of looks broken. But if you scroll down, you'll see the iPhone overlapping as well. Okay, so similar thing, there's a background attachment position fixed on these sections. And when you scroll down, it brings up the other section and its background image. Okay, so very cool effect. Quite easy to achieve with scroller as well. So position fixed and background position, background attachment fixed will give you this effect. Okay. Again, it's a little bit more advanced. You need to understand how jQuery works before you dive into something like this. But set up a simple demo or, co or on a code pen and then go from there. Okay, so hopefully that answers some of your question gives you some directions how to achieve this effect. Carl, thanks again for sending the question through. If you come across another website which you want me to deconstruct, just shoot me an email or leave a comment under the video. As I said, I'm starting a website deconstructions.com very soon, which will be a website dedicated purely to website deconstructions. So I'll be looking at the top websites out there and learning by deconstructing. That's what I do. That's what I do for a living. That's uh, how I learned everything what I know today. So I encourage you as well, deconstruct it, break it down, break it uh, into small pieces and learn from it. Okay, so the coming up on the website deconstructions.com will be websites like Redpixel Clio, which is a scroller project. We'll be deconstructing how this was put together which CSS attributes are animating. We'll look at this code pen, code and pepper.com, which is cute. Green sock project. And also we'll look at the Dropbox website, which I quite like as well, which animates two parts of the screen in a different way. So if I click on this one, next previous, you'll see that the sections are actually transitioning to each other in a very creative way. So some people asking me how this was created. So we'll deconstruct it on the decon website deconstructions.com. So check it out, sign up. Don't miss the launch. It's 24 days away. So yeah, leave the email address and I'll let you know when we are good to go. Thanks a lot for watching. And as you know, subscribe to the channel. And also, if you don't hear from me next week, I might be recovering from marathon, which I'm running on Sunday. So if you yeah, if you don't hear from me, I'll be probably gone. <laughs> but if I'll survive, you can expect another video from me next week. Okay, until then, have a good one. And I'll see you next time. Bye.